Hello and welcome back. In the previous episode we talked about reference types and value types and for value types we gave the example of printed page and uh, for reference types we gave the example of web page and uh, in this uh, video we're going to look further into classes uh, especially um, how do we construct classes how we call methods define and call methods and other features of classes so let's get started I'll just start by creating a new a new project and I'll call it um, maybe I don't know, classes so let's say dot net new And, well, we all can already see an example here of a class, it's, which is class program, and here we have a static method, and we'll go into static methods a little later. Uh, for the moment, let's define another class here. Let's say class point. And we want to construct a point. Now, a point, let's say a point has an x, and the y. And by default, these are private. So if I would not mention anything, it would be as if it is written like this, private. That means that when I create a point in here, like so, I cannot access x like this, because x is inaccessible due to its protection level. If I would make x public, then in this case, I could say public x equals 10. But if x is private, this is not okay, because it's inaccessible. So, if these are private, how would we be able to initialize the x and the y? So we would need to define a constructor for the object. And the constructor looks like this. It has the name of the class, and then it has some parameters. Let's say int first, int second. And we want to assign x the first, and y to be the second parameter. And now, if we want to construct a point like this, we need to pass in the two values. We can no longer just create a point like this without any parameters. Now, the only way to construct an object of the class point is to pass in the two parameters. And let's say here we have 5 and 10. So, at this point, we can create our point. Uh, one one more problem. We see that uh, the constructor is actually actually inaccessible due to its protection level because, as in the case of fields, if we don't define specifically to be public, by default they're private. So we have to say here public point, and now the constructor is public. Okay. But we still cannot access the values x and y, so if we want to display x and y, we can only do that from within the point. So we, would, we can define a method called display, and it's public, and it doesn't need any parameters, sorry. And we will say console write by x. Now, 
Unlike the constructor, a method also needs a return type. So it needs arguments. In this case, it doesn't have any arguments, and it needs a return type. If it doesn't return anything, the return, the return type is called void. And now this program is correct, and we can call here point display. So we should just see a 5 and then a 10. Let's see. Open the terminal. And we see 5 and then 10. First value and then the second value. So this is how we define a constructor. And we can have here many uh, other parameters, or we could have different values. Let's say we want to initialize both x and y to the same value. And we can have another constructor that says int same value. And we would say x equals same value and y equals same value. And if we call that constructor, Let's say, call it like this now, because if we pass a single integer, then that means that this constructor will be used. If we pass in two integers, that means that the constructor with two parameters will be used. So we, we use the first construct, constructor, and now we, will, we should see 5 and 5. So let's see. And we see 5 and 5. So the first constructor is now used. Now, generally, if, if we want to access, so let's say that we define the point, but now we want to be able to modify the value of x without having to create a new point. So if we want to do that, then we would need to define a specific method for that. So for example, we would say public void, because we don't want to change anything. We could say set x, and we need to pass in, sorry, the value for x x and we could say x equals value and then we could do the same thing for y so we could have this set y and then we would say y equals that value and here after we displayed once we could say point set x and we could say okay now i want x to be 10 then if I display it again, we should see 5, sorry, we should see 5, 5 for here, and then after we change x, we should see 10, and y should remain 5. So 5, 5, 10, 5 should be displayed. Let's see. And we see 5, 5, because we initialize the point with both x and y to be 5, and then we change x to be 10. So x is now 10, but y remain 5. And if we change y to 15, we should end display. Oh, sorry. Now we see we should see 5, 5, 10, 5, and 10, 15. Let's see. 5, 5, 10, 5, and 10, 15. Now, maybe someone needs to be able to access x and y from the outside. So, in that case, we would need to create another method that would return the value of x and y. So let's say we would have another set of methods here. So public. And now because they return a value, and, and the value that they return must be one of, of x and y, which are integers, that means the return value is an integer. And we we'll say get x. In this case, we can say return x. If we want to say So we define a point, and here I'm going to say console write my point get x. Then we set x to 10, and now I'm going to say console write my point get x again. 
So the first time we should see a 5 displayed because x was initialized as well as y to 5. Then we set x to 10 and then after we set x to 10 we should see a 10 displayed. Let's see. And we see 5 and then 10. Now having to write all these functions set and then get for x and, and then set and then get for y is takes a long time is a bit too complicated for most of the operations of course we could always just leave x to be public and then we could just call x like this so we could say directly point x equals 10 here like for comparison so instead of point set x10 we could just say t like say like this the difference is in this case x is a simple value which is uh, which is little literally an in just an integer but maybe when we want to set something we actually don't just set a simple value but maybe we want to do other things as well so maybe for example when we set x like this when we assign something to x we want to notify another component or we want to do some extra work now in that case when we want to both actually set the value and do some other things and we can use something that are that is called uh, properties so let's see how we would define properties. If we have a private int x like this, and we would want to define a property to access x, and we can define it like this, public int x. And please note that by convention, the fields have lowercase and because they're private. And the property in this case, as well as methods, as well as public methods, uh, and methods in general, have uppercase. Because they are functions. So, once we define x like this, we need to specify that we want to both get the value and set the value of x. So, we can say it like this get we return x and set we say x equals oops value and the value in here is a special parameter that is passed by the set function to our value we can also format it like this So this is how a property would be defined. In this case, we no longer need to have set x and set y like so. Let's say we don't want this constructor anymore. And I could do the same for y. now in here we define a point at, uh, x5 y5 and then we, we now we don't have the uh, method get x but we can just call x like this and when instead of set x ten, uh, and we pass in 10 we can just say x equals 10 so the property we access it as if it was a field but behind the scenes, we can run our own code because uh, before return x, we could also uh, write something like console write line x was oh. and when we set.
set it, we can say set x was called. Now, let's see, what do we expect this program to do? When we call point x, we should see get x was called. Then we will see the, val the actual value, which is 5. Then we assign 10 to x, so we will see set x was called. And then we display the new value. But in order to display the new value, we again call the get, so we will see get x was called. And then we actually see the, value, the new value 10. So we should see get was called 5, set was called, get was called 10. Let's run this and see if it's correct. get was called, 5, set was called, get was called, and 10. So it's exactly how we predicted. Now, one more thing, because you see, for example, when we define this public int y and get return y and then y equals value, if, if we don't actually want to do anything else like we did in this case when we displayed something to the console. If we don't want to display anything, but we want to have the opportunity to do this in the future, if, we, if the need be. So for example, if this was not here and this was not here, and same goes for y, then there is a shorthand function, a shorthand way to do the same thing. And we would remove x and y from here. And instead of uh, having get to actually return x, we just say get, like this. And instead of having this like this, we say set, like this. So this defines the property x with a getter and the setter. And, and we will access get the same way we act would access a field, so not like a method called with parenthesis, but we have the opportunity in the future to expand this get and run more code if we want to. The same goes for y, so we could just simply define it like this, or we can even use, put it in one line, which is how we usually do it. Now it's easier to read, let's say. Of course, now we don't have the small, uh, uh, small case x and y, so when we call this constructor, we need to call the property to initialize it. And this basically calls the set. And same goes for here. And now, Basically nothing was changed. Of course, now we don't have the console right anymore, but we should see five and then 10. So if we just run this, and we see a five and a 10. So these are properties. The reason why we want to have properties in C sharp defined like this, instead of simply having uh, accessors, is a bit more complicated because certain libraries depend on having values like these defined as properties. We will get to all of that, so JSON and XML and um, uh, web services, uh, certain types of libraries uh, prefer to have properties defined like this that are explicitly out getter, etc. We will get into all of that. For the moment, it's just important to know that properties are defined like this and are used like this. That's all. Um, so, if we would define a, pro uh, a public field like this, it would make, uh, like, let's say this would be Zeke, it would not make any difference from the caller. The 
color would call it exactly like this. It's what happens behind the scenes inside the class that matters. And I guess this concludes this video. In the next video, we'll look at these structures. So up until now, we talked about constructors and methods. And objects after being constructed, they are also, they can also be destructed. And we'll see more details on that in the next video. See you next time.